Hi there, welcome to this video from racingbetdata.com. Uh, in this video today, we're going to be taking you through the steps and stages involved uh, in creating a horse racing trading stroke betting system. Uh, it's been something that's been requested several times. We've had a few members who've contacted us around their systems and strategy, strategies, um, and we feel it's about time that we took you, the user, on a journey through the various steps involved and how you can develop your own and what tools you need and what we can provide to, to assist you on that journey. So I'm um, going to take you through a few slides here. Um, here's the overall agenda. So if there's elements of this that you that you want to skip to or go back to or pay more attention to, this is the, the overlined agenda for what we'll be going through. So first of all, obtaining and maintaining the data. So this is the key to any system or strategy that you're looking to create. Without data, I would say it is impossible because you have no means of testing the reliability and the stability of a system. Uh, now, what I would say is potentially with football, uh, data plays a less important role still significant but less important role than with horse racing now i'll tell you why my view is that because with football there's more variables so you've got 11 players or potentially 16 now with the the mass substitutions that you're allowed so there's a huge um hugely more variables that can affect the outcome of the game and with teams these days rotating players um past results uh, and form becomes slightly less significant because you do not know the team or the players that are going to be playing that day. Data cannot tell you if that team uh, had an incident at their hotel, or they had disrupted travel, if the goalkeeper's just had a new child, is not getting enough sleep, uh, if there's any outside factors affecting players that would likely affect their performance. You don't know if there's injuries, suspensions, like I said, rotation of squad, those elements are not present within data. Now you could argue the same about horse racing. A horse, you don't know what it's had for breakfast, for instance, but what you do have within horse racing data is detail around that horse's past performance compared to the upcoming uh, race. So you have, whether it's run at that previous uh, distance before, uh, has it run at that particular class? Was it stepping up a class? So you have the key variables in place already uh, within the horse racing data set. So my personal opinion is that if you want to get into automated system strategy creation, horse racing is an easier step than football because there are less determining variables that are unknown. Um, not to say that everything is accounted for because if it was that easy then everybody would be doing it, bookmakers would be out of business. So it, it's not a simple process but the data for horse racing uh, and football will stand you in good stead. But I, what I would say is with football, I think it's more difficult to create a system solely based around data. Not impossible, but more difficult. So for the purpose of this video, we are going to be trying to create a system for horse racing uh, on data alone. Now, caveat thrown in. So I'm going to start this today, 1st of October. And we will document this throughout the month at various stages and try and keep you updated uh, alongside the other work we're doing. Um, but what I will say is that it potentially will turn into a, a, a negative month. I have no way of knowing that. All I can do is put the uh, odds in my advantage, look at history, look at variance and understand that there will be losing days. So I'm not going to say that we can develop a system and every day throughout October it was going to be profitable because that I would say is impossible. Any successful trader, gambler, better uh, will tell you, you you cannot win every single trade or every single bet that you place. It's impossible. But what you're trying to do over the long term is win more than you lose. And that is how you generate that profit. There will be dips and there will be drawdowns and then there'll be peaks. Uh, but if you're looking over a three uh, three month quarterly or six month or even a, a year period if you've got the ingredients right then your system should be able to recover from those blips and will 
develop a long-term profitable strategy for you. So what we need to do first is obtain and maintain the data. So we'll get onto that in a second. Then we need to create the strategy with the data. And what we do is make that even easier for you now. And I'll show you again throughout this video how and why that is. How to test for significance. So we have a free tool on the website the, um, that does the p-val, calculates the p-value and the t-test for you. So you can anybody can export that and use that. And um, we use a bit of that in this video as well. Understand short-term variance. Again, just touched on that, but how to look at the bigger picture. Uh, you know, I could well develop this system start today and we could have a losing day today, being the 1st of October, 2nd, 3rd, could all lose. There's no reason to panic and I wouldn't panic. And I'll show you exactly why throughout the course of this video. Setting up an automated bot. So the bot being robot for short, um, and that is essentially a tool that will place your trades or your bets for you. So you do not have to be chained to a computer whilst you're at work or whether you're on holiday or on a school trip with the kids, whatever it may be. Um, you can set up a, an automated way of, of trading. Just to dwell on that a little bit more you cannot set up an automated system without the system. So the system needs to be developed and designed and work manually. You cannot expect a bot to carry out actions that you cannot do as a human uh, that would result in a successful trade. So it's important to get these elements in place first. Then it's about feeding the bot with data daily. How do you quickly and easily set this up? So we'll go, go on to that. Then we need to monitor the performance and finally be businesslike. So if anybody's watching this video thinking, oh, we're going to show you how to pick six teams, put them in an accumulator for two pounds and turn that into 150 pounds, uh, not for you. Uh, and again, if you're watching thinking, we're going to show you how to pick four horses, put them in a lucky 15 this afternoon, put 10 quid on it and it's going to turn it into 150 quid. It's not for you. What we're talking about being business like is having a stake as an investment. So whether that is 100, 250, 500 pounds to start with, you're putting that in as an investment with the long-term aim of turning that into a profit at the end of the month. Now that might be 150 pounds, it might be 400 pounds, but we don't know that at the minute, but what we can look at is how that would perform over, over the, step, the course of time. It's the same with anything, dealing with a business, putting money into shares, that will go up and down and up and down. But if you invest it correctly and wisely over the course of a month or a three month, six month period, that should show you a profit. And that is exactly the, um, the strategy that the angle that we're coming at here with, with um, horse racing data. So first of all, obtaining and maintaining the data. So if you're not aware of what we can offer, we offer um, fast and effective means of obtaining large batches of histo historical data with the aim of strategy system creation at the end of it. Not wholly intensively used for that, but that is what you can do with the data. So we have various means around the website. So if you're not familiar with what we can offer, have a look, racing-bet-data.com. Football data is the same, football-bet-data.com. Have a look around. We're going to focus on the data dashboard, which is the engine room of the Racing Bet Data website today. But there are other, other streams. So we have the pre-race download. We have the results and odds file. Um, but the, the, like I said, the real heartbeat of the site is the data dashboard. So I'm going to open that up now. Bring up the website. Now, it's worth pointing out I am on the test site here. And I'll, the reason that I'm on the test site, so this will be familiar to, to existing past members of the site, this layout. But what we're, we're in the process of doing, making this even easier for you as a, as a user, is if you scroll down to the bottom here, in fact, the eagle eyed amongst you might have already noticed an additional filter in here. So the SP, so you currently on the live site can filter between the um, winning SP, start SP, um, win market, on the industry or Betfair. We've now also added in the Betfair SP filter as well. So you can filter by the Betfair SP uh, place SP as well. So that's uh, already in place. Um, this is where the site ends currently. So on the um, toggle at the bottom there. Um, 
but what we have below it and we will be deploying live and we will do a new separate video on this so I'll go into a bit more detail on that separate video but just to give you a quick overview of what we will be adding in we're adding in these additional filter controls so back in July August this year we added in several new columns to the output uh, from the dashboard and those columns were directly representative of um, columns in the pre-based download file so how this has evolved over time since uh, August 2020 we created the pre-based download file for users and over time that evolved people wanted more and more things added into it um, Actually, what I'm going to do is just open up my existing data set whilst I'm talking because it's quite a large file. Um, so, yes, we op um, we created the pre-based download file. We added in new columns and then as it evolved, people wanted more and more things and we tried to accommodate that. But then we started getting pushback from from other users because the the format was changing. The layout was changing. They were getting familiar with it. They were using it for automation or for referencing. So we got to the point um, in 2021 where we said, right, we're going to fix these columns in now unless something is critical or it's requested multiple times, the format of that pre-race download file will not change and it has not changed since. So that was great. People using that, manipulating large bits of data. We showed you how to use Power Query to do that. Brilliant. And some really advanced members were creating great, reliable systems from, from that. But as that evolved, people wanted a quicker way or they wanted to be able to do it easier so we uh, in July August this year 2023 we added in several of those columns from the pre-race download file into the data dashboard it wasn't an easy feat by any means but those columns are now in we adjusted the profit tables as well um, so that was step one and now a step two what we're going to be doing hopefully in the next week or so is releasing these additional filter control columns so you will be able to filter the outputs directly on the data dashboard so you do not have to you should you still can by all means but you do not have to use the pre rose download file do large manipulation within that you do not have to export uh, large chunks of data from here and then do all your filtering in excel because you can do that using these filter control columns within the dashboard to, to hone your output. So a little bit on that, we will go into that in a separate video, as I said, but for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to assume that those are not in place and almost ignore those and um, export a full batch of data. So I've brought up on screen here, my blue Peter Styley, here's one I made earlier, data set. So what I've done is I've uh, exported batches, whole batches of data from the website usually about three months at a time going back to 2020 um, because that's like I said when we we started the um, pre roast download file and backfilled the data in the database now not all of these new columns that you can see here so these are the new ones that we added in um, from the pre roast download file not all of those are fully populated back to 2020 because as I said um, some of these evolved and were added in during the course of time so we don't have full coverage on all of those we do from um, July 2021. So we've got over two years worth of full data in there. Um, so I'm going to go back to here and export just yesterday's. I'm not going to put any other filter controls on. I'm going to export yesterday's to, uh, to Excel. Now this is what you can do. So I've built a database essentially and all you need to do then is go in each day or even if you miss a day you can go in and download a couple of days worth um, and do a copy on here flick back to my main data paste that in and you'll be able to see if we scroll across those are all added in now I did I have added in some additional calculations here just to calculate the liability for laying at the place uh, and at um, the Betfair SP so if we were to lay that's the liability i.e the risk if you were to lay at 10 pounds or euros or currency equivalent that is the risk so it's a simple calculation you can see on the screen so I've added those in to my database already okay I'm going to add a separate sheet here and go back to this one and scroll to the right and bring the PowerPoint slide back up um, because we are on this stage we've just we've done that I've obtained and maintained the data so I've created a database 
didn't take very long. Um, I know I did that. Here's one I made earlier, but it wouldn't have been much fun for you to see me going in and exporting three months worth of data. But that takes no more than 20, 25 minutes to create a couple of years worth of horse racing data, unfiltered, totally unfiltered in a database. And then the maintaining bit is where you go in each day and you just export using yesterday, send that to Excel. What you will have in the very near future is that ability. If you've already derived your system, you don't have to export tons of data that is irrelevant to you. Horses that do not fit your criteria and have to filter them in Excel because you can filter them at source. So that is the benefit that we will be bringing to you. So that bit is done. Right, now this bit, the interesting bit, I guess, for many, creating a strategy within the data. So as it says there, we provide the data, we provide a means to control the output with the filters and a means to export it. So you can either send it to screen, which we didn't do there, um, which will allow you to do quick analysis on the profit loss instantly. You don't have to do any calculations in Excel. It's all on the profit loss tables. We've done videos on our YouTube channel showing you how those work already. So I don't want to go back over that. Um, or straight Excel like we do here um, for more in-depth analysis and you can manipulate the data. So I've said here, you don't need to be an Excel whiz. Um, the video should give you, even a most basic user, some pointers in what to do. So let's go back to our Excel. We have here, in fact, I'm just going to close down uh, the output that I don't need, which is yesterday tab, get rid of that one. Uh, and here we have our data, okay? So we need to create a system. So the best way to do this is create a pivot table. And now I'm gonna select all of this data in here, go on all the way over the F. And here's our pivot table. So you can start putting in things like the date of the race in here. Um, you can start putting in um, the, let's put in the Betfair win return as a sum. Let's turn that into, so what this is showing here is that if you had backed every single horse <laughs> from August 2020 onwards, <laughs> you would have lost, obviously. You don't expect to be able to, to beat the exchange or the bookmaker that way. Uh, Betfair lay return, let's get that one in. And again, convert that to... Now what that's showing there is if you had laid every single horse uh, from August 2020 onwards, you would have made a profit. Probably impossible to do, given that horses, some of them would be trading um, as high as a thousand as an SP. So even if you were trading every horse to a pound, you would need a thousand pound bank to start with minimum. Um, so, you know, although that shows a profit, it's not realistic. Okay, and we can add in, uh, let's go put in the place, place lay return. Um, and we can actually put a count. Let's put in a count in here. Just use the date one, it could be any one. So that shows you the number of number of races in those um, those time periods as well. Um, in fact, what I'm gonna do is take out the win, because we're, we're gonna be looking at laying here. So, and let's put, the, let's put these in that order. So place lay return, um, and now I created those liability columns. So let's put in a the sum of place liability as well. Um, and then we can put in the sum of the Betfair liability. Let's put these as numbers. Uh, sorry, as, as currency, just for my OCD more than anything. It doesn't have to be done that way, but I know I'm dealing with pounds and pence if I have it in the right format. So you can see here that the 266 million pounds would have been your liability, although that's you know, you're never going to lose that much. That's <laughs> that's the, 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 the turnover of, of um, money that you would have been using. Now, we can also put in here, um, let's just move this out a bit here, just move it down one. And then let's put in uh, the average 
odds of the BSP. Now the reason we're doing this is so we can start calculating the p-value uh, uh, further on. But I'm going to get in heads up here. Uh, well, what am I doing? I'm looking for Betfair SP and I want to turn that to average. So those are the average odds and we can make that a number to two decimal points. And then we want the average of the place SP as well. Turn that to average. And again, we can turn that into a two decimal point. And what we could do if we're saying, we're, so the system we're going to be looking at is laying, uh, and we're going to be looking at laying in the place and win market at the same time. Um, and what we can do here is create our own filter. So calculate field and we can call it total. And that total could be uh, the Betfair lay returns plus the place lay returns. And that's our total profit if we had laid into both markets okay now what we can do here you can see it's batched this automatically you can go in uh, click on here and go uh, ungroup and that will bring it up by days and if you want to do the reverse you can go to group and you can show it by month and years however you want to display it so you can see your output then um, by different time periods whether you want it daily whether you want it over the course of months years how it or, quarters, whatever you want to do, that's how you can manipulate that further. Now, what I want to do here is add in the key criteria as to our selection. And this is where you can do a bit of trial and error. Now, at the moment, you can do this in Excel because we've got the full data set in the output. What you'll be able to do is do this on screen using the new filters. You could be able to play around, toy around with that um, as soon as we released it. But this is this is a fun way for people who, who like a bit of Excel to get in. So you can put in things like um, up in trip, for instance, you can put these into the filters at the top. So if we want to select up in trip, we can pop that one in there. So if you wanted to look at all horses that had gone up in trip and you want to lay them, this is the sort of thing you can do if you wanted to look at the last time out position uh, and you only want to look at horses that won last time out, you can do that's how you can start developing your system. Now, the system I'm going to develop and use has been shared to me by two or three members, very similar. They've come to me with very similar um, strategies. Uh, Ask me not to disclose that for obvious reasons. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to be a bit sensitive around what we share. But it sounds like, you know, I've got two or three members that have told me what they're doing and found this profitable angle. I am sure there are others who are probably doing very similar things as well, but I haven't shared that with myself or with anybody else. And I have no reason to, to no qualms of them doing that. I, in fact, we advocate not sharing because the minute you start sharing, the minute you potentially devalue that strategy and lose either the whole or part of that edge. So, you know, I'm going to be a bit cautious with it here. I'm showing you, you know, I've just bumped in a couple of things in into this um, filter control. We have all of these obviously other um, control variables. And what I'll say is play around and see how it looks. So I'm going to hide, I'm going to put the criteria in and hide it so it's it's not visible uh, and in, uncopyable. Um, so I can't be held accountable for any uh, members that come to me and go, why have you shared exactly what I told you? It's not fair. So I'm going to pause the video, put those filter controls in and then come back to you with the, the profit table uh, and then we can take the, the video to the next level. Okay, all done. So we have our filter controls in place, <clears throat> hidden away, and the results of this system, if you like, back tested over time in place. So you can see here the place returns. So this is to 10 pounds or 10 unit stake uh, and the same with the lay market. So we can see 2020 actually um, had a loss 
uh, for those four or five months, although some of the criteria wasn't in place, so it wasn't established, so we could probably ignore 2020. 2021, uh, 2022 and 2023 to date, you can see overall profit and you can see that there are some losing months in here. In fact, let's look at the total. Um, see 2021, only January really had a loss, uh, significant loss here and here, but still a profitable, profitable year, 2022. And again, another fairly significant loss in January, small loss here and otherwise, um, profitable months throughout 2021 20, to 23 really and overall 22,000 uh, pounds profit okay so on the face of it that looks good uh, so how do we test so as I've said before we have on our website a um, an offering scroll to the top here uh, example downloads we have a statistical relevance file that you can export and pump your data into. What I'm going to do is um, export this and relate it for this system. Now, the one thing that's worth mentioning is that the statistical relevance file should be used when you have uh, gone live. So it's a, a lean measure rather than a lag measure. So what I'm saying there is um, we want to be looking at uh, where you've deployed, you've created a system. So as in, I've created it today. Um, I want to be putting those figures in at the end of December for the period of October to December, because otherwise there is a, a, a backfitting bias that can be applied. Now, as it turns out with this system that we're looking at, this was actually brought to my attention um, about seven weeks ago. So it is still performing um, and evidence of that, although smaller time period. So the statistical relevance can be used for back testing a system and giving you an indication, although you've already done those filtering elements and potentially made filter criteria based on how it looks rather than any logical judgment. So I would say use this with a uh, degree of um, interpretation and use it for forward testing uh, so it's all well and good creating a system, but what I would say is then trial it for three months uh, and see, pump your figures in here for that three month period and see if it still gives you uh, the, the relevance that you that you need. So how do we use it? OK, so what we can do is pump in where we have these green figures. So I'm going to go back to the uh, table. So we can put in number of um, bets if you like um, what I'm going to actually do is just shoot this over to the other screen so you won't be able to see it on there but I'm going to explain what I'm doing anyway so uh, 23625 number of wins um, isn't really required on this um, so we can go straight through to create this um, the yield now the yield is um, your profit divided by your liability. So in this instance, I'm going to bring back that one. Actually, let me just fill it in on here and then I can show you what I've done. So what I'm doing is summing. Uh, I'm, div I'm getting the, the total, which was 22,152, and I'm dividing it by the sum of the liability of the place and the liability for the um, win, which gives me a percentage of 0.69%. Uh, so I can pop that in there. 0.69%. Oh, 0.69%. Get it right in a minute. Okay, that's still wrong. Let's take out a zero. Right, got it. Finally, average odds. So obviously we can see the odds that we are betting at or the BSP. 
Now, because we're laying, we need to do the inverse of the odds. So what that means is we need to do um, a sum, which is one divided by those average odds, uh, and then work that out, and then minus one, and then plus one at the end. So that gives you the, the laying odds. Um, I'm just going to see if I can bring this screen over. OK, so what I mean is... Uh, I want to do one divide, uh, and that is the average here. In fact, I want to do average of those two, uh, and then minus one, plus one. Let's hope. Just strip this down. Doing it under pressure here. Look, average. So the average is that one and that one. So those are the average odds. So we want to do equals one divided by that minus one plus one. There we go. That's it, 1.12, okay, 1.12. So that gives us our p-value already. Um, calculates the standard de de deviation, calculates the test, uh, the t-stat, calculates the p-value, 0.08, which says it's a 1 in 1,193 occurrence that that um, system that we've created is down to luck. Now, with that caveat thrown in, like I said, this you know we're purely looking at historical data here. We've not drawn the line in the sand. What we want to do really is get a couple of months worth and look at this at the end of December. But you can see here the guide. So a p-score below one percent gives strong evidence, and under 0.1, very strong. So we're looking at um, a a fairly reliable system here based on the um, the inputs that we've given. I've got not given these which generate the Archie score but we're purely looking at the p-value very quickly here so that gives me confidence initially that that historical data looks fairly reliable but like I said the you know real world scenario we should paper trade monitor this um, over the course of the next three months We've already done that for, for six, seven weeks now since the people started approaching me about this uh, this system. So we're going to dive in here to, to make this video a bit more exciting. It's not going to be the same if I show you with, without us actually physically getting involved. Um, so that's, that's how you can test the system using the free tool that we've got. Um, and there's a little bit more info in here that you can obviously get to grips with. Back to the PowerPoint. So we've created the strategy. Um, the next step is the testing, which we've just done. So as it says here, it's a key element of delivering any strategy. That doesn't mean the back testing. Important to continually test in a real world scenario. Exactly as I said there, you need to test, test, test and test again before you fully deploy. Always recommend testing. Um, and you can use that that tool to, um, to your advantage. And I'm, Anybody that's you know, not fully au fait with um, significance and t-test, p-values, Archie score, those sorts of things. Tons of free resources on the internet as well to familiarise yourself with. You probably become more knowledgeable about it than, than myself. Okay, understanding short-term variance. So another key thing to focus on. Um, it's part of the testing, but understanding the bigger picture is key. So. With laying in particular, the fluctuation can be significant across a day. Now I've seen it just in these last few weeks where the system can go from being um, 190 pounds up within a day to being 40 pounds up. I've also saw it where it's been 150 pounds down and it's finished 20 pounds down. 
So that fluctuation across a day is huge, let alone what you'll see uh, in a week. Or So you need to be mentally prepared to how, how to ride these, these storms out, if you like, um, and, and having the bankroll in place to protect it is key. Um, so I'm, I'm saying we're going to start with 500 and that's my recommendation. Uh, but there might be some um, trades, selections, if you like, that are being laid at BSP of 50. Um, now, a 10 unit stake at 50 is your full 500. So there might be the odd occasion where uh, your, your bankroll's exceeded. Other issues around Betfair and the place market sometimes takes a bit longer to settle. Uh, settle the outcome is that some of your bankroll might be tied up in previous races that hasn't been settled yet so you won't always be able to get on every single one um, but going back to variance like i said the investment is a bankroll so you can't have the emotion attached of like yes we've won three in a row brilliant i'm 40 pounds up here uh, and you can't have the low of like, oh my God, we've lost three in a row. We've already lost 100 quid on the first three races. It can happen. I've seen it happen. But I can't reiterate enough that the variance, if you've got a reliable, trustworthy system, you ride it out. And over the course of a month, three months, six months, 12 months, you will come out with an overall profit, which is the aim. I've shown you there on the example output, there have been months in the last... Um, two, three years where there has been an overall loss. That could happen again within October, could bust the bank. Um, history says it's more likely that we would generate um, a profit, um, but it's still unknown. I've got a slide here, which is the um, an example. So this is a, a graphical example of the, the data that I've shown you already and the profits. Now, if we'd started here, so let's say we started 1st of June, 2022, which is here, the magnifying glass highlights this, uh, we could bob along for that whole month and end up down. We could then go through July and into the beginning of August and significantly down. At that point, you'd be thinking, if you started here, you'd be thinking, well, this is a load of tosh. I'm not gonna persevere with this. As you can see, the worm turned, it did drop again, but the overall trend is positive on this. Now these lines here show where we, we had a, a, we haven't got the full data, so we, we had no selections in those, those periods where the straight lines are. Um, <clears throat> so you can almost ignore those, but the, the, the overall trend is um, positive. So short term variance, relative to short term, even though this is, you know, we're talking about a two month period. So that's fairly, uh, <clears throat> fairly significant period of time. But you would have that historical data telling you at that point in time that, you know, things are likely to to turn and, that, and they did and they dropped back down again. But the overall trend is is positive. So short term variance. People looking for that quick win, thinking, oh, I've done three selections, they've all lost. You know, you've got to look at the bigger picture when um, investing in this, if you're, if you're serious. OK, so how do we get these selections into an automated bot? So I've obviously derived the criteria um, within the Excel file here. Now, what I'm able to do then is go back to um, the data dashboard here and I can output today's horses in the same way and I can put my filter controls on to generate my selections. One way of doing it. Another way I can use the pre-race download file because essentially that are, that's where the filters, uh, the, the columns originate and I can generate my selection this that way and what you will be able to do like I said in the next couple of weeks even quicker assuming your all your controls are, are listed here is you will be able to pop in your photo controls on here and generate your output straight to Excel or straight to the uh, screen and take a copy of those and you've got the 
uh, the data to hand. So how do we send these into an automated bot? So there's plenty of software, third party software. We're not affiliated with anybody else, um, but we, um, we've been using Gruss software um, because it interacts with Excel in a nice way. So we have our Excel outputs and we have Gruss that allows you to feed into Excel and it will place the bets in the market for you as you direct. Um, there are other offerings, Geek's Toy, Bet Angel, um, but you know, shop around. What's good for one may not be good for other, but we're going to demonstrate using Rust to place the bets. Like I said, the Excel connection helps. Um, the naming convention with our site tallies exactly with Betfair, apart from one instance or one uh, scenario, shall we say, where there's a what we call a dual active horse. So we've got two today, one Sharjah and one Starman. They are, there is another active horse, at least one of each uh, running concurrently, not necessarily on the same day or at the same track, but there is another active horse. So to separate those out, we will have a suffix at the end uh, based on the country of origin of that horse. So with Betfair, they very rarely have that. I think there's the odd occasion where there's two horses in the same race with the same name. They will denote those with a country of origin suffix. All other times, there would just be the name of the horse, which tallies with us 99% of the time. But on that odd occasion, that there's a horse running that day that um, has a another dual active, shares a name with another dual active horse. We, we denote it with a suffix. And what I'll show you to, how to do uh, in our in the bot that we create is um, to ignore that suffix. So it will find a, an exact match with that horse rather than a fuzzy match. So what I'm going to do is bring up a, here's one I made earlier, bot and talk you through that. Now, I will just say that, again, we're not affiliated with Gruss in any way. I have spoken to them um, and they are happy for, for me to, to speak about the software um, and um, their offerings but again I'm by no means an expert there'll be people out there who, who use this routinely um, I've, I've dabbled with it a little bit in the past but um, like I said by far from being an expert so I'm, I'm going to be showing you a basic approach to using it because my knowledge is is fairly basic so um, I'm going to bring that up and um, talk you through what we have in place okay here is the, the bot it's an Excel file, so nothing is going to look too pretty. You can tart these up and make them as nice as you as you like, but it, it's a very basic one that I've just uh, have knocked up here. Now, this is where you'd feed the horse names. You'd get your selections that meet your criteria, whatever that might be for the upcoming day. So you've already back-tested using that criteria, so whether it's you know up and trip and last time out position, whatever it may be. Um, you've generated that list for today, and you can put the horses in here. Now, you can export that to... Uh, Excel, as we've just spoken about, you can pull it from the daily pre-race download file. Uh, you can send it to screen and then copy those. However you want to do it, there are automated ways that you can do that as well, depending on your uh, your software ability. Um, I know we have users that export um, the files automatically, the pre-race pre download files using Python. Um, not a skill set that, that I have myself, um, but people can do that. They export using Python and then uh, filter their the, the the file based on their criteria and then automatically feed their bot. So they have to do nothing um, apart from ha have a uh, an active um, racing bet data membership. That is it. It runs itself. Uh, that is literally money for old rope. But let me show you what we would do. So I'm just going to type in Sharjah. Um, now the one running today is the French one. So this is how it would appear in your output. And as you can see in column B, uh, we have a um, amended version of the horse. Now, if it was, um, who else have we got winning today? Let's just have a look, Let's pick a name. It could be any horse, but I'm just gonna make sure we've got one. Uh, so we've got Old Worth Court. Now there is no suffix in that one, 
but that pulls through and works as well. So that's the formula. Now there's an easier way, depending on the version of Excel. Let me just show you another way. We put in text before. So depending on your Excel version, I think it's 2019 or um, before, you need to, you can use this. So what it's looking for, the limiter is what it's looking for. Uh, so that is really easy. Let text before, you label the cell that you're looking at, and you want to find the delimiter is a space and a open bracket. So that is always what would come before the country of origin, whatever that is. Um, and that would work. Um, it won't work here. So what you'd need to do is put if error. So it's generated an error. That's your formula that's giving the error. If it's an error, then just use that. You can drag that up. So again, two ways that you can use our data outputs. Now I'm using it for the bot, but this is for anything. If you want to strip out that country of origin, um, got if error again, but we're using the left and find combined functions there, uh, which if you've got a, an earlier version of Excel, that's the way to do it. If you've got a newer version, you can use the built-in text before function um, and it will do exactly the same thing. So that generates your, your list. So let's assume those are the only two horses that we've got in our list. Now you can see all these other tabs down the bottom here. Um, we've got a config one which controls the stake. Uh, anything else you want to put in here is a fixed control variable. Now with this um, automation, this system strategy criteria, whatever we want, all, we, all we're focused on is the stake because we've got all the rules have already been put in place to generate our selection. So we don't effectively need too many on here. You might have some odd controls that we that we set in uh, within the sheet, but essentially you've picked your horses based on their criteria. Um, let's go back to uh, one of these tabs. So these are the place. So I've got up to 10 place markets here and up to 10 individual race markets. Let's go to the place first place market. Now this is actually yesterday's. I've not uploaded today's yet. Um, so you can put in all these additional functions here if you're looking to put tick offsets in and it's the time to the off, how many selections are in here. So if we have this one as, uh, let's change this one to Sharjah. You can see that that selection has gone to one. So I've got formula in here that is looking at the horse name, which will always be in this column uh, A and it's matched. So we're saying, yep, that is a selection that we want to potentially trade on. So we've already identified that. Now there is another criteria that the, um, the system that we're going to use has, and that's based around the odds of the horse. So I'm not gonna go into the exact criteria on the min or max on that, uh, but essentially the trigger is looking at this column and saying, uh, does that match? Yes, it does. Can we bet? So what it's saying is, can we bet when it's uh, the market's different than closed, the market is not in play, and the time before the off is 15 seconds or lower, um, and then that, that will change to an OK. And once the trigger says, right, that is OK, the selection is there, I meet the other criteria around the odds, it will say place LA bet and that will lay into the market uh, here, the trigger. It will try and lay at the odds given here. Now, obviously here is way above the odds that are um, currently showing. So it should give you an exact match. Uh, the, the, the reason that that's a risk is that if you're trying to get the odds here and the market's moving really quickly, which it does 15 seconds before the off, uh, the odds on that horse might shoot down and you might miss it and your selection doesn't get matched. The other alternative is to request to lay at SP, um, which is all well and good as long as your liability uh, exceeds £10. So in all of these ex uh, examples, it would. But if a horse, uh, a horse was trading at 1.5, for instance, and your stake was £10, that would be a liability of five. Um, and that bet would get rejected at SP because it needs to meet the minimum of a 10 pound criteria. So those are just a couple of things to bear in mind. Now, we're straying into the world of Gruss and how that works and Betfair's restrictions. So again, like I said, I'm not 
by no means a, an expert with this, but this is essentially a bot and the bot that I've created that I'm going to use throughout the month uh, to, to generate our um, selections and monitor it and see how it, how it goes. Okay. Let's bring back the PowerPoint. So that's setting up an automated bot, feeding the bot data daily. So I've touched on that already. So we've got uh, a naming convention, which is the same as Betfair, I've shown you the way to get around the odd instance where the country of origin suffix uh, would conflict with the way that Betfair show the, uh, show the horse. Um, so again, feel free to rewind, look at that formula. It's looking at column B, which is the corrected name for the horse, stripping out the suffix. Um, and you with your skills and ability might be able to find uh, a better way to get your selection straight into your bot without having to do anything. Um, that, that's something people do. So it's uh, we're moving fast into that sort of world and, and environment. So monitoring the performance is key. Uh, remember the short term variance. Don't make a knee jerk adjustment. So I've seen people, you know, they've built their criteria, they've done their system, they've run it for a couple of days and then something's gone wrong on that fourth day and they've started saying, right, OK, I'm not going to do Saturdays anymore or I'm not going to do when I get to uh, a profit of 40 pounds, I'm going to stop. Those things are all well and good if you have tested on that basis. So if you've tested and you've said, I'm going to exclude Saturdays, for example, from my data set, and your system shows a profit and you decided that at the outset rather than looking at it going, oh, Saturdays look bad because if there's no logical reason, there should be no reason to exclude a Saturday. But if you, from the outset, you've derived that I'm not gonna trade a Saturday or I'm not gonna trade certain courses because they're a left-hand circuit or a right-hand circuit or because of the surface uh, surface of that track or because of the, where the stalls are, whatever it is, if you've got a logical reason and you've built that in before, um, generating your output, that's fine. If you've generated your output and looked at the results and gone, oh, it doesn't perform well at York, I'll take York out. Well, you're doing that and that's backfitting, backfashioning. Unless there's a logical reason that you attribute to the reason why you've done that, you shouldn't be excluding. And it's the same thing when you've gone live with a system. Unless there's a specific reason why you would alter it, do not make those knee-jerk adjustments based on a short-term sample or a short-term variance. Um, I'll give an example here, best football managers. So we said about football and horse racing, the difference, but the best ones are continually evolving. You know, you think back to 10, 15 years ago, even 442 was rigid. You know, you look to get a good winger. You wanted two big central defenders. Uh, your right back and le left backs were generally the worst players on the pitch. You needed a big striker with a little striker. Look at how the game has evolved now. You know, we've got inverted fullbacks, false nines, uh, two eights, a pivot. All of these things, those are words never used in football 15 years ago. So football managers and specifically the ones on the continent, Pep, for instance, has, has brought that in. Sweeper keepers, all of these sorts of things. The game has evolved. You need to be... Um, evolving yourself and thinking outside of the box as to how you can uh, profit. Um, your, your system needs to be um, something somebody hasn't done already or thought of already. Now we've given, we give tons and tons of variables. So, you know, the scope is huge, um, but, but because you've developed and created one system doesn't mean you stop and rest on your laurels there. You should continually be thinking of other ones and other methods to accompany that and add to your your suite of um, strategies that you, you deploy. Looking at uh, managers again, an analysing other games, continually looking for an edge. Trading is no different. You should always be aware of what's happening in a, and around and market changes and uh, all of the those factors that I said that you may not see in data. To, to evolve and adapt. Um, being business-like, this is key. So we're not betting blind. We've got data, We've developed an advantage, perceived advantage from the data, right? We've tested it. 
So we know the bank roll will generate a profit over the long time period, which should. Um, so you've got to think of your bank as a capital investment. Stick to the plan. Don't discount certain days of the week, like we've spoken about, unless this came out in the testing and there's something tangible to do. And then expectations. So again, it's not about riding the wave and taking the lows. Where we've spoken about automation, it can help remove that. If you are emotionally attached and you're looking at every trade and thinking, oh, no, that one's won. Oh, yes, that one's lost and celebrating it. You want to try and devoid yourself of that emotion. Um, again, if we're looking, if you're watching this video and thinking, oh, you know, I'm going to find a way with the data and turning a fiver into £2,000, it's very unlikely. Uh, you may well do that, but it, you're going to then want to do it again the week after and the week after and the week after. And then next thing you know, you're 12 months in and that 2000 that you had, you've now lost 2400. There's no long term strategy or testing associated with that type of betting, you know, unless you've got a strategy in place and that is your bit of fun. That's fine. But you shouldn't have that expectation um, that that you're going to you're going to turn that into a re regular profit. So you need to be business-like, turn your capital investment over. So that 500, 100, whatever it is. Now, the reason I'm saying 500 is that that should allow you to have a big enough stake to not get your, your bets rejected at SP. So I spoke about that, your, your, the 10 pound liability. If you're trading with a bank of 150 pounds or 150 pounds or smaller, that's absolutely fine at micro stakes but you will not be able to get your bets matched at SP. So you have to think along the lines of what I showed you in the bot. Now that bankroll isn't, you know, we've, we've looked at figures of the millions, for instance, over four years. Now you don't need that as a cap uh, one-off investment up front because you, you're generating, uh, you're turning over that bankroll very quickly. Now, sometimes, like I said, the issue can be that Betfair takes a while to settle the market, which means your bankroll is temporarily depleted. So that can impact. And again, if you're having a relatively small bank, that will have a bigger impact. Or if your stakes are not in relation to your bank. So where I'm saying our stakes are £10 and our um, trading bank is um, 500, we're using a 50 to 1 ratio, so 2%. And I think even that sometimes can be quite low. So... I wouldn't recommend trading at anything higher than two, maybe three percent of your um, of your bank as your stake. Uh, that would be that would be my guide. So hopefully you found that video useful or certain elements of it. Um, like I said, I, I can't. We could spend hours delving into this um, and spending more and more time looking at things in each detail. But the best thing to do is go away and have a play with it yourself. Use the data. We've shown you there how you can use pivot tables very simply to, to do some testing. We've got the statistical relevance file that you can use. Have a look around on Google for, for T-test, P-value, Archie score, anything else statistical relevance that you can find to, to give you that confidence. Paper test. Do not dive straight in. I'm saying that we're going to be doing that today. I'm going to be doing it for the demonstration purpose and it could completely backfire. We could end up losing our bank within October. It's a £500 bank and using 2% of it as a stake. It can happen. Um, but, you know, I'm hopeful that, that it won't. The, the data and the the, um, the confidence is there within the, the testing. Um, find out about Grus, Bet Angel, Geeks Toy, whatever it is to use to automate because that helps take out that um, human element if you like, uh, takes the emotion out of it um, and can also free up your time. Um, you know, if you can automate your trades, if you can automate your um, exporting of the data or even not automating it, even just doing what I've done there, if you create your, um, your database, fill it every day or every week, however frequently you want, um, export your day selections from the pre-race download file or from the dashboard directly, you know, you, you could be taking four or five minutes a day max to get yourself set up and that could fire out 40, 50, 60 trades, whatever it is. Um, so it's worth investing a bit of time. I've shown you the tools. 
I've shown you the methods behind it, I've scratched on the surface a little bit. Um, but essentially it's, uh, it's, it's for you to tailor and think, think about how you can benefit. Um, I think people are finding huge value in what we can offer with the data. Uh, we're continually evolving. Um, and I better get back to work on those filters because they're not going to release themselves. I'll do another video as soon as those, those uh, filters are ready. But um, I hope you found this useful and let us know. Keep us updated and we're always happy to hear about your, your progress and your systems and strategies. So good luck.